Good morning and welcome to the second session on chapter 5, Market Equilibrium. In this chapter, we are going to now talk about the simultaneous shift in terms of supply and demand. And we are also going to talk about the free entry and free exit concept. So through this session, we are just going to try to understand what are all the factors that causes a shift in demand and in supply altogether. So going forward, the first slide for today's session is the shift in demand and supply. Now let's try to understand why there is a shift in demand and supply that happens on a market equilibrium basis. Now let's look at the first graph here. On the first graph, you will have the quantity on the x-axis, price on the y-axis. Now, if you look into the graph, there are two important factors. You will see the demand line and you will also see the supply line. So in the graph, we have both the factors, the supply as well as the demand factor. Now, if you see here, as the price increases, now if you see here, the price is increasing. The price is increasing from P0 to P2. So the price, there is an increase factor. Moment there is an increase in price, automatically the supply line, that is the supply curve, will shift rightwards. That means the producer, the manufacturer finds it on a very feasible, on an advantageous position because now he can supply more to the market and earn more. The market is allowing for a price rise which means I would be interested in supplying more products to the market. So that is where the supply curve will tend to move towards the right words. Now what happens here is that the demand will also increase. If you see here, initially the demand curve is here. It makes a movement, a rightward movement and this moves to a position called D2. Initially it was in the position D0. There is an increase in price so it moves to D2. So in the first graph what we are trying to see here is an increase in price is making the movement of supply and demand curve move towards rightwards. There is a rightward shift that you are able to see altogether. Now they both meet at two equilibrium points, point E and point G. So those are the factors where the equilibrium is attained in the market. So once again repeating, this is the factor that we need to know in terms of shift in supply and demand. Initially what happens, the price increases from P0 to P2. Moment there is a price increase, there is a shift in the supply curve, it moves towards rightwards and you would be able to see that the demand curve also moves rightwards. There are two equilibrium points, point G and point E because of the shift in price. So as the price increases, the supply in the market increases, the demand factor also increases. Now let's move to the next graph. In the next graph, you would see that there is a constriction in price. From P0, the original value, I am going to decrease the price. The product price is going to come down. So it moves down to P1 at this juncture automatically when the price of a product starts falling down there will be a constriction in the movement of the graph so you will see here the supply curve is moving leftwards so automatically what will happen here is that there is a restriction factor that's happening so it will start moving leftwards why because if the price falls down in the market the supply will also come down the manufacturer will now think this is not the right time for me to produce more and supply more in the market. So I will try to reduce my supply and I will try to restrict myself in the market. The moment that happens, what happens here is that there is a restriction factor in the demand also. As the price goes down, the demand factor also starts moving leftward. So now you would see that the curve is moving on the inward position, it's moving leftwards altogether. Again, we will get two equilibrium points, point E and point F. Now, these are the two points where the market is matching on the equilibrium point. The supply and demand curves are matching at these points. 
So, the entire concept of shift in demand and supply is to find out the equilibrium points where both the supply and demand will match and we will find out how the market comes to the equilibrium position altogether. So, all we have to keep in mind, taking the price on the y-axis, quantity on the x-axis, what happens when the price increases, what happens when the price decreases. Moving forward, supply shifts all together. What happens when supply changes? Now, let us try to understand this graph through an example. Now, in the current situation, there has been a great demand for emergency essential goods altogether. So suppose we are in the process of manufacturing essential goods and commodities, automatically we will find that the demand factor has gone up several times in the market. Now let's take companies like Dettol or Hindustan Lever Limited or companies which are in the pharma sector, they have all become essential items during the current time of emergency crisis. So now what happens here is that all these companies would suddenly start finding that they have to increase their supply to the market. Why? Because there is a demand factor. So now what is going to happen here is that they suddenly start seeing that there is an increase in price factor. So from P0, it starts moving to P2 altogether. Moment it starts moving, there is a higher supply line altogether. Now what is happening here is that the demand factor is increasing, the supply will also tend to increase. Why? Because I am finding this particular position very interesting for me to supply. Now, if the price comes down, if the essential price commodity starts coming down and the demand factor is also not that much, then automatically the supply will also start coming down. The supply is nothing but the request factor that has been created in the market. So once the request factor is being created and automatically you start seeing that the products are being demanded by the consumers in the market, supply will start moving up. On to the next graph when you see price being taken on the y axis, quantity being taken on the x axis, you would suddenly start seeing that there is a rightward shift in the supply. There are two lines here. We will see the initial supply curve that is S0 and the next new supply curve that is S1. Now what happens here is that when a company tries to reduce its supply, automatically there will be a squeeze on the product in the market. Now what will happen because of that, there might be an increase in price, there might be sometimes the demand factor will also start going up. So now what happens here is that when you start pulling the price downwards, automatically the shift will start coming up to the other side and the demand factor will also start making a new equilibrium point altogether. So what we need to understand here is that moment the manufacturer tries to squeeze on the supply, the price factor will go up. Automatically the demand will go up. So what the customers will do is that the customers will try to buy at new price. So they will be ready to pay a new price altogether. Now what will happen here, they will start seeing that we are ready to pay a higher price altogether and buy that particular product. So here when we see in the graph, there are two factors. One, when the supply factor moves in terms of increase in price. The second one, when we see that there is a decrease in price from the original shift altogether. Moment these shifts are being found, you will suddenly start finding new equilibrium points altogether. These are the most essential factors that you need to learn from a market equilibrium. How does a product create a shift in demand or in supply is primarily because that there is some equilibrium factor that is working on. Until and unless the market comes to an equilibrium standpoint, you will not be able to decide the actual price of the product. This is very, very important for us. It's a very, very important takeaway. From this lesson, we need to understand until and unless we reach that equilibrium point, you will not be able to decide the price of the product. 
the price of the product will not be determined on a statistical manner on a statutory manner or some mandatory formula the price will be determined in the market only when you reach the equilibrium point there are many products where the price might fluctuate because of the demand and supply that you see in the market so every time when we go to the market when we try to understand economics altogether we need to keep in our mind that the equilibrium point of the product once the product reaches an equilibrium point it becomes an acceptable manner for the consumer to pay the price and take the product that is what we are going to learn from this graph altogether let's going forward now we are going to talk about what happens when the simultaneous shifts of demand and supply happens now there are four factors that we are going to learn here both supply and demand curve shift rightwards both supply and demand curve shift leftwards and the supply curve shifts leftward demand curve shifts rightward now if the supply comes to rightward and the demand goes leftward so four conditions that we are going to learn here the first two conditions are quite obvious which means both of them follow the same behavioral pattern supply curve also moves right then the demand also moves right supply curve moves left then demand also moves left that's what we saw in the first graph all together now from the second graph the point number 3 and point number 4 they are very very important supply curve shifts leftward demand curve shifts rightward when does this condition happen all together if the price restriction happens moment you start seeing that the price has started falling down moment the demand will start pulling up why because moment the price of any product let's take even a sanitizer a soap a shampoo a toothpaste whatever is the product here moment the price starts coming down the mentality of the consumer is to go and buy more so the demand factor will go up so that's what we are trying to say here when the supply curve shifts leftward that means the price is coming down so the consumer will now try to increase the demand and start taking more on the fourth point the supply curve shifts rightward and demand curve shifts leftward that means to say that as the manufacturer increases the price the market starts seeing an expansion of price the manufacturer will start going and start selling the products to the market he will try to sell more in the market he will push the products he wants to increase the supply from the original to say x factor automatically what will happen is that moment the supply increases in the market the demand will come down so these are the four factors that we need to keep in our mind the first one where both the supply and demand will shift rightwards it's quite obvious because they show the same kind of pattern moment the next factor we see that supply and demand moves leftward then automatically they are following the same pattern price falls down both of them start falling down but then the third and fourth conditions are opposite to each other when supply moves rightwards demand moves leftward in the fourth condition when supply moves rightwards demand will start moving leftward altogether so this is the condition that you need to understand very clearly the point number 3 and point number 4 these are the conditions which is very very essential for us to know why because moment the manufacturer starts restricting the supply looking at the fall in price the demand will go up consumer will start stocking up the product in the next point when the consumer start seeing that there is an increase in price the demand will start coming down supply will start going up this is the time for the manufacturer so he will start pushing the products at a larger volume into the market so this is what you need to learn from this chapter all together now moving forward graphs for simultaneous shift all together this is what we were trying to understand moment that shift is happening you are able to see that the supply factor is moving rightwards this is very very important and the demand factor is also moving up so what we told in the first two points both the curves moving rightwards supply is also moving rightward demand is also moving rightward you can see the shift here very clearly 
the price is increasing automatically you will see that there is a shift on the rightwards together again now you are going to see that the next factor moment it comes down you would start seeing that there is a constriction that is happening all together moving forward we are now going to talk about a very very important concept called as the free entry what is this free entry all about and why is it so important in any of the markets in the world today if i want to establish a business it is not going to be that easy i cannot just walk into that market and i say that tomorrow i will start my shop because there are some restrictions there are some barriers that we need to keep in our mind and those barriers are not that easy to overcome but in the concept of market equilibrium in chapter 5 we try to understand an important concept called as free entry altogether which means to say that the companies can come in any point of time they can establish and they can also experience profit at a higher level so what is those factors how is that going to happen is what we are going to see here now the first one that we are going to see is that no opposition or barriers in terms of entry so nobody is going to oppose you you want to start a new shop in Mysore, in Bangalore, in Delhi, in Calcutta, in Mumbai, wherever you want to go. We feel that the market is in equilibrium position. So nobody is going to stop you. Everybody are going to welcome you. Everybody are going to say that please enter the market at your will and wish. So absolutely no opposition, no barrier at all for you to enter the market. Second condition, you would start seeing that attraction due to super normal profit. As a business, as an industry, as a sector by myself, I start seeing that there is an absolutely wonderful profit coming to me. I am able to earn more than any other market altogether because I am not just earning a normal profit, but I am earning a super normal profit altogether, way above my margins way above my target altogether why that is happening because there are no barriers there are n number of customers ready for me i just have to go and sell my product so absolutely no barriers for me i'm able to sell it as and when i want next one market supply shift rightwards this is very very important that means it's a price taking behavior that's what i'm trying to intend it is shifting rightwards so that is very very important for us the market is allowing the price factor to set in now the manufacturer will understand this is the right time for me to produce more and send it into the market i am not going to restrict myself so what i am trying to do here is that i am trying to shift the right words all together price is being taken by the market the market is absolutely fantastic for me to sell more and more and consumers are ready to pay the price altogether now fall in price due to many firms this is one thing why because now many firms are there which means to say that in a given area let's say there are about 10 or 20 firms of the same kind in the market all of them will be trying to sell the same kind of product there will be a decrease in price factor the price will come down because the price comes down everybody has to come down so everybody's profit is restricted everybody will have the same kind of market now we are not going to see a differentiated market we are going to see a homogeneous market so everybody is earning the same kind of profit everybody's price is also coming down for everybody the market looks really green and it's very good for us to make money altogether so this is very very important for us to know fall in price due to the large number of firms or due to many firms because there are many people in the market the price has to come down the price will become stabilized and everybody will be selling at the same price altogether now moving forward concept of free exit altogether one fine morning if i decide that i don't want this market i just want to exit i've got fed up with this market i am not finding anything interesting i'm not finding any profits coming anymore can i come out of the market the question that lies in the mind is the exit possible altogether can i just walk out of the market the answer to that yes because we have a free exit we say to our consumers we say to our people we say to our manufacturers if you are interested to go out of the market the market gives you a free exit you don't have to wait for me 
So the day when you start finding that you are not getting profits, the day when you start finding that the products are not sellable in the market, the day when you start finding that the market is not giving you that super normal feeling of making profit, you are free to exit out of the market. We are not going to restrict you at any point of time. Which means government is not putting any norms, any regulations. You don't have to do any filing, any documentation work. The day when you find that the market is not according to you, is not acceptable to you, you can just walk out of that scenario. You can just walk out of that environment. So what is going to happen to the profit and loss? What is going to happen to the balance sheet? We are not really worried. What we are worried is that the company can walk into the market at any point of time, walk out of the market also at any point of time. So the concept of free entry and free exit is possible in a market equilibrium scenario. This is very, very important. Why? Because in real life, in real economy altogether, this is not possible. This is only an assumption altogether. In a real life, even to start a small shop, there are a lot of legal and formal documents that you need to go through, steps you need to go through to set up a small business. And the winding up of a business is even more complicated. But in a market equilibrium, assuming the factor that market is in a perfect condition, you can enter and you can exit at any given point of time. That's the best part of being in market equilibrium. Moving forward. Price determination with pre-entry and exit. You would see a demand curve here. Now, before we start getting on to this, we take the price on the y-axis and quantity on the x-axis. So this is my x-axis, this is my y-axis. Now, what would be the price determination when it starts coming about the free entry and exit factor altogether? Now, the price entry and exit will be purely determined with the minimum average cost. Why? Because in a free entry and exit, the average cost is what we are trying to cover. We know that this is the average price that is found in the market and that would be your equilibrium point altogether. So you will determine the point that is the price factor where the demand factor meets with the price. So automatically that will be your minimum average cost and that is the price that you would like to offer to your consumers. So your consumers will not go again on a bargaining mode, will not try to fight against that particular product or the particular industry and try to get the maximum benefit. Rather, they would just accept that minimum average cost because that is what has been determined by the market and you are ready to sell the product to the consumer at that price. So when you enter the market, you would be selling your products on an average cost. And when you exit the market, again, the average cost that is prevailing in the market on that day will determine your exit factor also. So the concept of entry and exit will not have a very great influence on price because price is already covered like the average cost. We have already kept it in mind. We have already kept a benchmark. We have already kept a factor in mind. Based on that only, we shall be determining the factor altogether. So this is what we need to keep in mind. The price is more or less fixed. It's not going to be very much flexible. It's determined by the market. You're already on the equilibrium position. So when you enter and exit, it is going to be that price that is already determined. And based on that, you are going to make your entry or exit out of this market. Moving forward. Shift in demand. What happens in shift in demand? Now you need to see this graph very keenly. Price on the y-axis and quantity on the x-axis. Now what is going to happen? Now moment you see that there is a shift in price. Now the demand will start going up. Now there is an increase in the price factor altogether. The demand is again going to come down. So you see that two factors are here very clearly. One an increase in demand. The other one is decrease in demand factor altogether. So when price increases there will be a decrease. When the price decreases, the demand will start going up. So in this condition, you would start seeing that when the price starts falling down, the quantity increases. So there is a shift in the demand curve. In this sector, if you start seeing, there is a fall in the demand. 
So automatically, what, why this is happening? Because the price is coming down. So when that factor happens, the demand will also start when the price increases altogether. There will be a constriction in the demand factor. The shift in demand and shift in supply are actually parallel in nature. That's what you need to understand in the graph. Many a times what happens is that demand and supply don't work on the same parameters. They work opposite to each other. When price increases, supply will definitely increase. But when price increases, on the other side, demand will start falling down. So this factor we need to keep in mind. Supply and demand will try to work opposite to each other. They will not try to work on the same lines altogether. So with that factor, I would like to conclude this session today. Thank you for joining me on this wonderful session. I hope the session was interesting, educative and informative. In the next session on chapter 5, we shall try to understand the price ceiling, price floor and the other concepts altogether. Until then, thank you for joining me on this wonderful session. Have a nice day and please stay tuned, stay blessed and stay educative altogether. Thank you once again.